What's up, Cypher Slackers? So I'm sitting here with Nebula, and you guys watched our last video where he took the diamond and tried to teach us how to play Digimon. So the question now is, can we actually learn how to play Digimon? So we're gonna cover some of the key points that we weren't able to cover in the last video and walk you through step-by-step step what it takes and what the strategy difference is for the card game for you to be able to actually build a deck and go from being a fan to now entering the TCG since this is the very first time we're gonna have the card game in the United States. I'm here with Nebula, he's the professor on this, so all card rulings are really gonna come from him. If you guys see card rulings that we may have missed or have incorrect, please feel free to comment down below and let us know where we can get better or what we could do different in order to provide a better Digimon experience. Keep in mind, we're mostly Yu-Gi-Oh players, but the professor here has convinced us that we're going to become Digimon players after this. So. We're gonna start, and here we go. Pro, this is the deck. Pro Digimon players. Pro Digimon players. Pro Digimon players coming out of the Slifer Red dorm. So tuition is definitely going up this year. Um, and here we go. So here we're gonna start with the game now. We have our decks. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and you can go ahead and cut my deck. I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna do half and half and just pass these over. Get the game started. We're gonna roll the dice. See we're gonna roll. High roll. High roll. It's a four. All right, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and start us off. So it's my understanding that the counters are actually a very important part of the game. It's what determines whose turn it is. And I'm gonna explain that as we end up in draw. You guys know we have our Digi Eggs right here. You're allowed five Digi Eggs per game. Um, and actually you shuffle them. So you actually don't even know what you're gonna get. And then you kind of stack them up and put them to the side. Oh, if you wanna cut those, that's fine. <clears throat> you pass that over. Okay, and the first five cards, these are the security, right? So we have five cards that you put to the side and these are essentially the barrier between our Your opponent life. being able to take us out of the game and, right? So the winning they, condition. The winning condition, right. So this is like, essentially, yeah, we're gonna call them life bars. They do have effects when they flip. So your opponent actually attacks into them. The attack difference matters if these have an effect that will also come into play which will walk you guys through if that happens in this match um obviously i'm gonna take five cards for myself very different from playing a game even like Yu Gi Oh. Uh, just because the mechanic is the interaction with the deck is very limited and that's actually really good because if you're playing remote duel it lessens the opportunity for your opponent to cheat or for you to feel that there is cheating involved um and who's going to start us off? You are. All right. So, okay, as you guys know, here we go for our opening turn, right? We're going to go ahead and Digitama hatch, right? The same phase. Right. This is the appropriate term for what we're doing here. And this is our beginning. Our uh, in training. In training. So keep in mind that I guess we can sit. This is a bench, more or less, where the Digi eggs have to sit here before they can actually digivolve, is that correct? Or uh, move to the battle area. They have to digivolve first, then move to the battle area. So you have the opportunity when you start your turn to either evolve him, so you digivolve him, or you can actually move him into the field and then play him. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do both on the same turn, so that's something that you're definitely gonna wanna consider. Uh, you can do one or the other, that's correct? And you can only have one uh, digi egg per turn in per the turn. area. I mean, uh, we're out of time. So you get five cards to start. Uh, the game does consist of some cards that have an effect, and the majority of the cards are monsters and trainers. Um, Digimons and their tamers. My opponent has the option to uh, digivolve his Digimon to a uh, level three, or he can either play a Digimon for the cost for its actual cost. So for the learning scenario, we're gonna go ahead and just disclose the fact that because we cannot digivolve, we didn't open up a way to do so, our only real move at this point is to go ahead and put a monster on the field and we're gonna conserve our costs to minimize what our opponent can do on his turn. Mm -hmm. The cost is described here on every single card. There's a Digimon cost and there's a play cost. Obviously, he's not being digivolved. You're playing him directly from your hand. So the cost is higher but 
as that is the only move that we have now, we're willing to pay the cost and pass it over to Nebula here, who's our opponent and our professor. All right, so now I begin my turn and I will start by drawing. And uh, I also uh, do, get to my nursing area and, uh, dig, and hatch my egg. I have a Upamon here. And my only option here is to just uh, move on to my main phase. All right, during the main phase, I have uh, the option to Digivolve, which I'm gonna do. Every time we Digivolve, we uh, draw a card. Okay. I'm also going to Digivolve once more. And I use the uh, Digivolve cost instead of its play cost, so I'm only using one memory. And now I will uh, play the cost of Pseudomon, which is seven. It's not really a good move, but the uh, card it has a really good effect, which allows me to draw two cards. Some cards might be good to play, depends on their effects. And it's good to point out at this moment that you can distinguish the effect of the card and an inherited effect, which in this game is symbolized by the smaller box underneath the level. If you wanna go ahead and like, explain the difference between what is an inherited effect and what is the actual effect that you're gaining right now that you felt was worth paying such a high cost for. Well, so I, I use the effect to, uh, um, uh, to hard cast him just for I can uh, get the effect to draw. And I also know that uh, next turn, uh, when I digivolve him over to a mega, I can also gain the effect to either, uh, I get the inherent effect to uh, gain two memory if I uh, attack my opponent. So it would be safe to say that what you're trying to do now is gain some advantage while at the same time you're already planning your follow up for yes, next turn. Um, yes, I'm planning along. I'm playing, I'm planning my next move. So now he's passing it back over to me. Here you go. We're going to draw one card, add it to our hand, and we start off by making a decision of moving the Digi Egg or Digivolving the Digi Egg. Um, in this scenario, he can't do anything because it's still in, its tra in training, so we'll skip over to the main phase. Since on this turn, our opponent has gone ahead and provided us with a lot of memory. more memory we're going to play this a little bit different because again full disclosure we have still not opened up a level three monster and that prevents us from making a move here with the kapuri mon or even opening a move here to use some of this memory in order to digivolve our digimon do you have a little we're going to go ahead perhaps? and use our digiball we're going to pay the digi cost of three which is one two three which is still our turn um, we have a blocker on the field now, and the blocker is a very interesting effect. It seems to be something that is uh, very unique about the black deck. The black strategy, although incomplete in the TCG, it does have its advantages. One of the advantages of this deck is that it seems to very naturally want to put blockers on the field. This is an example of that happening, despite the fact that we can't digivolve from two to four, but we do have a blocker. This protects the memory. Uh, which is the whole point of the game. So we're gonna go ahead and with Andromon. Don't forget to draw. Right, so that's something that I have been doing consistently and that's forgetting to draw every time I Digivolve. And that's just uh, unfortunately a bad Yu-Gi-Oh habit. There is no pot of desires here. So I forget that you draw, you draw after you Digivolve. And that's a something very, that you shouldn't forget very either. Good. Okay. There is no hand size limit, which is another huge difference from most CCG games. Um, you're going to hold as many cards as you draw. You digivolve as many times as you want. You There's no limit to the amount area. of monsters that could come to the field. Um, so if uh, this game goes the distance, then you'll actually get to see a field full of Digimon and you'll see pretty much the boss monsters and uh, hopefully we'll get a good match out of it. Yeah. Um, so here we go. We have Andromon and level five. We still have some memory. We can make another move. We can play conservative or not. I would typically, I guess, want to say that we should play somewhat conservative. But again, for the sake of the video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play a tamer, a trainer. Tamer. Tamer. And I'm going to play Ty. Uh, for all of you Digimon fans, I'm sure this is a card that hits close to home. We're going to play the high cost of four. Of four. Uh, and that's also going to end our turn. But what you see is that this card here, see, it has two effects. And that's what you guys want to be aware of. You have the security effect, which means that it's only an effect that matters when this card is placed 
here. The above effect is what we're going to be using now, which is that at the start of our turn, if we have two or less memory, we set it to three, which basically means that no matter what our opponent does, if he wants to end at one, two, or zero, it will automatically set us to three. So it gives us a little bit of a kickstart when our opponent tries to minimize his memory, which is a strategic thing for him to want to do. And the second effect is that on his turn, all the black Digimon gain a thousand DP, which also comes into effect in a situation where his Digimon only has 6,000 DP and this guy has 7,000. Well, he's now an 8,000 DP thanks to time and thanks to the cost of four memory. Now I will start my turn, and at the start of my turn I draw, and now I go to my nursing area. Uh, I will use the option to uh, move my Digimon to the battle area. So now I have a Gorillamon with the uh, inherited effect to uh, on deletion, I will gain the memory, and if my opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution sources, I get to draw a card. My opponent has the, uh, my opponent gave me enough memory to play a Mega, so I will Digivolve my me into a Mega, my Plesiomon, and now I'll also draw a card. I also gain the effect now as well to, uh, when I attack, I gain a memory if my opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution sources. So I will proceed now to the uh, battle, to battle my uh, opponent's uh, security. Um, since my opponent has no Digivolution, uh, digi uh, Digimons with no Digivolution sources, uh, he has, he, I get no effect. And uh, now we'll proceed to the uh, damage step. My opponent flips his top card, and it's a Minimon. His DP is 3k, so he's uh, sent to the trash. And now I will attack as well with uh, Gorilla Mon, the 6k, at uh, his uh, life. He has the option right now to either block or uh, or not. And I think that we're gonna go ahead and take the option to block only because we don't want to have such a far range between our life points and his life points. I don't know if that's the proper strategy or not, but it's the strategy that we're gonna use to get through this match. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the option of blocking. You don't die. And I don't die because my DP is higher than yours? Put it in, yes. Oh, there you go. But it goes into defense. Yes, it goes to, it, uh, it suspends itself. It suspends itself. Okay. Uh, I, I get the effect of Gomamon to gain a memory, since on deletion my Digimon was uh, destroyed. I will now play uh, Gabumon for three. So my opponent will uh, I, I end at two, but since my opponent has tie, it'll uh, he'll start at three. And with uh, Gabumon, I get to draw a card when I he's played. Proceed. So I'm gonna draw a card for turn. And here we are again, still in desperate need of that level three. Uh, we unsuspend our monster. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and we still don't wanna move him just because if we did, it would just be vulnerable to things that, you know, without a level three, there's nothing we can do with him. On the other hand, what we can do is unfortunately, So we're gonna have to play a little bit more defensive, I guess. So we're gonna go ahead and pay the cost of five, which will then automatically make it my opponent's turn again. But what we're gonna do is build up a defense. So we have two blockers on the field now, and I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Nebula. All right, so I'll draw. It's the unsuspend phase. My Palacio Mars stands right back up. And now we'll proceed to the nursing area. I uh, hatch my Upama. And proceed to the main. I'll digivolve for the cost of zero. I'll digivolve for the cost of two. Problem. I will proceed to attack with my Plesioma. We're gonna proceed to block. Sure. I also gain a memory. Since Guard Dramon had no uh, Digivolution sources. And that's an effect that you're getting from whom? I'm getting the effect of my inherited, the uh, Pseudomon underneath the Placeomon. I'll uh, play Armadillomon for two, and it'll go back to you. 
We're gonna go ahead and draw for turn level three, please. Okay, once again, we are in desperate need of that level three. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and just mirror last turn by playing the cost of five to put down another blocker on the field. So We're gonna go ahead and put another blocker on the field in hopes that we can preserve these guys until we draw that level three. <laughs> so I draw for my turn and unsuspend my placing one. I'm going to remove my armadillo mark from the nursing area. What's good about this deck is that it builds up a big board by using uh, by playing a lot of rookies for a, for a really low cost. So I'm going to play uh, Elekmon as well. So I'm going to proceed to attack my opponent with Placeyamon. So I gain a memory because uh, he has a uh, Digimon with no Digivolution sources. And now he has the option to block right now. We're going to go ahead and block again. We're going to send him to the trash. Okay. My opponent has a lot of life. So I'm going to play another Gabumon. Draw a card. 4-3. But my opponent has tie, so he'll start at 3. We're going to go ahead and draw for turn. Still no level 3. You know what? We finally drew one, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna digivolve our Kapurimon with Chumon. And Chumon, as you see, has no inherited effect, but he does have an on-play effect. Um, his on-play effect is your opponent can't gain memory except with tamer effects, which actually is pretty significant with this deck, so some may have even considered just hard playing this card in order to prevent him from gaining more resources. But unfortunately, since it's our only level three, in my opinion, this is the best move so that we can draw a card and maybe try to get into another level three where we can make a play. Unfortunately, that is not gonna happen. But what we're gonna do is leave this here in the resting area and we're gonna use these memory points in order to try to set up either a play or some defense, but as you see, the rookie beatdown deck, that's kind of what's so scary about it. I mean, these guys are low in DP, but it's starting to amass to, you know, like that's a lot of monsters. We have one monster on the field. And of course, if we're playing this incorrectly, please feel free to, in the comment section, let us know, like, is there a way to save the black deck? Uh, it seems a common consensus is that the next set uh, of Digimon, which, is Digimon 1.5, am I correct, right? That's gonna actually bring the support that the deck needs to be a little bit more competitive. But um, at the moment, hey, you know, it's gonna do what it's gonna do. Play another block if you can. We're gonna have to play one, two, three, four. Okay. Drop and I'll uh, proceed to my draw phase and my nursing phase. I also get to uh, stand on my TCO one. So proceed to the main phase and I'm gonna dig the ball my, uh, into my Goma one. I draw for the distribution. And now I'm going to uh, attack my opponent. I gain a memory. My opponent has the option to uh, block or take the uh, uh, hit. We're going to go ahead and take that hit. Oh, that's a good one. Fantastic. So, so one of our boss monsters just happens to be in the security area. And that's usually really good for the turn, the person getting attacked. At this moment, so uh, we calculate the DP, and since my DP is weaker than his, 
my Digimon are unfortunately uh, meets a very bad end. And this as well. So although we do lose a security card, he is going to lose a lot of resources underneath that one very strong Digimon. All right, so now we'll proceed to the next attack. And I'm gonna attack with my uh, rookie over here. I guess we draw a card since my opponent has a Digimon with no Digimon resources. Now it's your time to uh, either block or let the attack go through. So my opponent decides to take the hit. Oof, another big beater. Looks like my armor demon is also gets trashed. I'm gonna swing again with another 4k. My opponent decides to take the hit. And it's a block dragon, I mean uh, Agumon. So he uh, uh, he definitely survived. And I'm gonna attack with my Gabumon for 1000 DP. He, he is trashed. And I'm going to try to win with this one final attack. To win the game, you have to take out his life and then swing one more time for uh, the finishing blow. So we saved our blocker probably to try to survive this turn. So we're going to go ahead and use that effect now. Unfortunately, my Legmon dies. Your, your Andromon stays on the field. But uh, I have one more Digimon and he has no more defenses. And with that, I uh, win the game. So there you have it, everyone.